Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about dates, and in today's class, I want to show you something significant that recently came up to my attention related to the year 2021. This very well could be a solution to the 1,260 days that's talked about in the book of Revelation in chapter 12. That three and a half years could actually be pointing to the year 2021. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Now, I have to remind you guys, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a seer. What I'm about to tell you is not based on dreams or any private interpretation whatsoever. If you are to pull out the scripture that I'm about to show you, you should be able to come up with the same thing that I'm seeing here. But anyway, I plan to keep this as short as possible. So let's jump into it. And the first book that we're going to look at is the Epistle of Barnabas. This book will be found in your Apocrypha. And we're going to jump all the way down to chapter 15, where it starts talking about the Sabbath day. But we're going to look particularly at verse 3. It says, He speaks of the Sabbath at the beginning of the creation. And God made in six days the works of his hands, and on the seventh day he made an end. And rested in it and sanctified it. Now, of course, that's nothing new. We heard about that in Genesis and Jubilees and Jasher and everybody else that talks about the creation story. But look at verse 4. It says, Notice, children, what is the meaning of he made an end in six days? He means this, that the Lord will make an end of everything in 6,000 years. For a day with him means a thousand years. And he himself is my witness when he says lo the day of the Lord shall be as a thousand years so then children in six days that is in six thousand years everything will be completed the book of Enoch also talks about this seven thousandth year with the eight thousandth year being at the beginning of the new creation this is probably where Barnabas got his information from we can see this illustrated by a chart by Clarence Larkin called the 7,000 years of human history. And to step through this really quickly, we know that Adam was created on the first day or the beginning of the first 1,000 years. And we know that the first coming of the Messiah was exactly 4,000 years later. But what Barnabas was talking about and what Clarence Larkin is showing us here is that at the beginning of the 7,000th year is the beginning of what we know as the millennial age, that millennial reign. That's the rest period that Barnabas was talking about that is to begin with the 7,000th year. So what year is that? Now, to figure out from Scripture when that is, we first have to go over to the book of Luke to understand when the first coming of the Messiah was. We're down here in chapter 3 of the book of Luke in about verse 21 and 22 when it's talking about the Messiah's first coming, and that is when he was baptized in the river Jordan. Well, we come back up to verse 1, and we can see when that was, and that was... The 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. A quick Google search on Tiberius Caesar and we see that his reign started in the fall of the year 14 AD. And if we pull out our fingers and count with the year 14 being year 1, we end up with the year 28 being the 15th year of his reign. So from what we gather from the book of Luke is that the first coming of the Messiah is the year 28 AD. So 28 AD would have been the beginning of the fifth day, which makes the beginning of the seventh day in the year 2028. Now, before we go any further, let me show you how the year 2028 is actually prophesied as the fall of Babylon that we read about in the book of Revelation chapter 14 and chapter 18. That is actually what Daniel is talking about over in chapter 12 and verse 7 when he's talking about the time, time and half a time 
that period in which the adversary shall have to accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people and all of these things are to be finished what he's talking about is the reign of Constantine or the papacy or the Catholic Church first we just need to understand that when Daniel was referring to a time he was referring to 490 years or 70 weeks as he talked about in Daniel chapter 9 then all we need to do is come over to a website called softschools.com to see that Constantine's reign actually started in October of the year 312 this would have been the beginning of the Catholic Church or the beginning of the church age it was shortly after this during the Council of Nicaea that Constantine went on to change the times and the laws that we hear about in the book of Daniel and in Daniel chapter 12 he was saying that there will be three and a half of these 490 year periods from the beginning of the church age a quick calculation we see that 490 years times 3.5 equals 1715 years well if we come over to timeanddate.com in their calculator and put in October the 28th of 312 and add 1715 years we end up in the year October the 28th of the year 2027 now although that is extremely close to the year 2028 I still feel like I have to point out a few facts that makes it even closer than it appears one is how we start our calculation on the Julian calendar which was in effect in 312 and we end up in the Gregorian calendar which is in effect now and we know that when that transition was made from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar they subtracted days from the calendar in other words October of 312 would not be considered October in the year 2027 because they're on two different calendars and we have to take into account that this is all on man-made calendars both the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar but the sacred calendar is the important calendar here and of course its months and days are completely different so with all of that said this date here is within the margin of error of the year 2028 and it adds more significance to the year 2028 what it looks like to me is that there's some event that will happen to destroy Babylon like we read about in the book of Revelation before that end date that we hear about in the book of Barnabas and that millennial reign that is to start on the sixth day well apparently Babylon falls immediately before that reign starts but anyway let's go on now all that I've shown you so far you can find it and do the same thing in your scripture that's important to the ministry there are no such things as strange interpretations or private interpretations so anything that I could come up with you guys should be able to come up with yourself using your own scripture and simple mathematics but when I was looking at this I started playing around with the numbers and I decided to subtract three and a half years from the year 2028 and what I came up with was the year 2024 if you subtract three and a half years from 2024 you're going to end up in the year 2021 but let's touch on 2024 before we look at the year 2021 we already know that there's a lot going on in the year 2024 including the conclusion of that X across America that is formed by two solar eclipses one in the year 2017 and the other in April of 2024 this brings me to another point from the book of Gad the seer looking down here in chapter 14 the last chapter of the book of Gad the seer you see it's talking about the great tribulation this whole chapter is about the great tribulation and it starts off with Rosh Hashanah 
or the memorial of blowing of trumpets. And from what I read in this chapter and everything else that I understand from scripture, I believe is pointing to Rosh Hashanah of the year 2017. Well, notice down here where it's talking about the books that are to be opened. We hear about books in the book of Revelation. There are actually three books total. These books contain the records of our deeds, even down to our thoughts for everybody in humanity. And it is from these records that we all are to be judged. You see here in verse 8 where he says he read from the first book. And it is those found in this book that will immediately receive eternal life. When we jump down to verse 11, he's talking about the third book, which contained the deeds of the wicked people. And we see that these people were turned over to Satan for his destruction. But in verse 10, we see that the second book was opened, which contained the names of those who are committing unintentional sins. And you see in there that after this book is open, those people are given a third of a month in order to correct their deeds. Well, a third of a month is 10 days. And we know that a day is equivalent to a year. What this is talking about is 10 years. And this is what's known as the 10 years of awe. And the 10 days of awe are the period between Rosh Hashanah and Atonement Day. So what this is telling us is that in the year 2017 began the 10 years of awe given 10 years for us to learn to live within the commandments of the Bible before atonement day. Well, doing simple math, 10 years from the fall of 2017 takes you to the fall of 2027. And when we go in and we look in the year 2027, we see that Tabernacles ends in the latter part of October of the year 2027. So I believe what Gad was telling us about the 10 years of awe end with the prophecy of Daniel and the fall of Babylon, which coincides with the tabernacling period, which we know as the millennial reign. But anyway, let's go on. Because we were looking at the year 2024. Well, let me show you something else significant about the year 2024. And how it's related to the 120th Jubilee. Now, in the book of Jubilees, which gives us an account of all of the Jubilees from the creation of Adam until the crossing of the River Jordan, we read about the last known Jubilee, which was the crossing of the River Jordan. Now, without going into all of the details, which we've covered in several videos before, we know that the crossing of the River Jordan was in the year 1455 BC. And since that's the last known account of a Jubilee year, we know that 1456 was the last known sabbatical year. So with that information, we can figure out when the sabbatical year is and when the next Jubilee year is. So we start off in the year 1456 BC. And we have to remember that the sabbatical years start in the fall, so we'll add 0.5 in there. So then we'll add enough Jubilee cycles to get us to the current year. From 1456, it takes 70 Jubilee cycles to bring us into current time. Remembering to add one year because there was no year zero, we see it brings up the year 1974. You see how we had to multiply times 70 from the crossing of the River Jordan? Well, looking back over in the Book of Jubilees, you see that the crossing of the River Jordan was the 50th Jubilee after Adam. So 50 plus 70 is 120. This is important because when we come over to the Epistle of the Apostles, 
and we come down to verse 17 we see that the Messiah told his apostles that he would return in the 120th part he goes on to tell him that it is between Passover and Pentecost or between Pentecost and Passover so it's not exactly clear exactly when it would be at the end of the 120th part but what we can gather is that he was telling him is that the return would be at the 120th Jubilee so what this is telling us here is that the sabbatical year before the Jubilee year started in 1974 so if we step 49 years ahead of that we could see when the next sabbatical year would start and that would be the fall of 2023 and so from that we know that the next Jubilee cycle begins in the year 2024 and I believe that's what the Messiah was saying when he says pray not that your flight will be on the Sabbath day I believe he was talking about the sabbatical year but anyway so I think it is of no small significance that when we subtract three and a half years from the year 2028 we end up in the year 2024 but watch what happens when we subtract another three and a half years we end up in the year 2021 and one of those three and a half year periods must be what John was talking about in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6 I believe John was pointing to the year 2021 so by now you must be wondering are there any prophecies pointing to the year 2021 and you guessed it the answer is yes Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 through 13 seem to be pointing to the year 2021 so let me show you how this one works out first of all we must understand what Daniel is being told in verse 11 when he says from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away to know exactly what he's talking about as far as the daily sacrifice being taken away we have to come back to chapter 1 of the same book where we read about Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and how he besieged Jerusalem in verse 1 well you see in verse 2 that he carried the vessels of the house of God into Shinar well that's talking about those gold and silver items that were used to perform the daily sacrifice those are the same golden goblets that his grandson was drinking out of at the party when he saw the hand writing on the wall now the scripture provides us with all of the information we need to know in order to understand when this year was when exactly did he take the daily sacrifice away and we've covered this in many classes before and according to scripture this happened in the year 605 BC the internet confirms the date of 605 so let's see what Daniel was talking about in chapter 12 verse 11 says from the time in which the daily sacrifice is taken away to the abomination of desolation there will be 1290 days that's 1290 years from the time Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and the abomination of desolation set up on the temple mount and when we do the math on that it ends up in the year 686 AD and when we look to see what happened on the Temple Mount in 686 we see that that was the year that they completed the Dome of the Rock therefore the Dome of the Rock was what the Messiah was talking about in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15 when he said when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place and therein lies the need for this parenthetical phrase whoso readeth let him understand you have to read the book of Daniel to understand this prophecy is what he's talking about but anyway when we come back to chapter 12 and verse 12 it says blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days or one thousand three hundred and thirty five years 
Well, when we add 1,335 years, we end up in the year 2021. Now, Ezekiel chapter 24 goes into more detail on when exactly Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem. But from what we gathered in the book of Daniel, it appears as though 2021 may be a significant year. So you may be asking by now, since all of this information is in your scripture and we have thousands of ministers on YouTube and everywhere else that definitely have Bibles and scripture in their house. Why aren't they talking about this? Well, it is obviously because they are only concentrating on what they call the rapture. And none of these events rise to the level of importance to talk about. So they just ignore them or try to find ways in which all of these scriptures support their rapture scenario. But while we're over here and jumping through all of this scripture, let me show you a couple of fun facts related to that event. Now, one of the verses that those guys point to all the time when talking about the rapture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. But notice some of the key words in this verse. It says, and with the trump of God. So remember the word trump. Now, another verse that they like to pull out is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. Notice that it says at the last trump. And then over in Matthew 24, which not a lot of those guys talk about, but is actually talking about the same event. It's also talking about the sounding of the trumpet. So the rapture event is all tied to the trumpet. So the question is, when do the trumpets sound? Or like we read in 1 Corinthians, when is the last trump? There are several people around the world claiming to hear trumpets every day, but are we in the midst of these trumpet blasts or are we even close so what I'm saying here is that all of these guys who are obviously ignoring the prophecies of Daniel are focusing everybody's attention on the rapture which is to occur at the last trump so they are skipping over the day of the Lord and talking about events that will only happen at the last trumpet blast. So those guys are going to be waiting, but now is not the time to be waiting. Like we learned over in the book of Gad the seer, we are in the seven days of awe. Seven years where we're given a chance to get right with the Lord. And that includes the book of the covenant. Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7. That's what we should be doing as we prepare for this six seal event that is coming next. After we cross that hurdle, then we can start worrying about the trumpet blast. So if we're only looking forward to the rapture, we're going to get caught off guard by the day of his wrath. So, like I said, Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7. That's four chapters that is known as the book of the covenant. It starts off with the Ten Commandments, then it talks about the judgments before it goes on to the statutes. And we learn about the angel, that covenant angel that we read about in the book of Malachi chapter 3 and 4 that's supposed to come before the day of the Lord in order to help us to survive the day of the Lord. And I believe that's why those guys are so focused on the rapture is maybe because they're not keeping the covenant they know that they have no chance of surviving the day of the Lord at all so they might as well focus on the event in which they all leave the planet and are swept off into the spirit world but the promises of the Bible are inheritance of the earth so go ahead and subscribe to our channel cuz that's what we're all about over here at Hermes Academy learning what it takes for us to survive the events that are coming and watch for new classes that we have coming out and in the meantime go over there and read Exodus chapter 20 all the way through 24 verse 7 being mindful of the Sabbath day and the feast days Passover and the other feast days are a very important part of surviving these events that are coming 
And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.